you know who inspired me to like actually do TikToks? Because you've had her on this podcast before, and it's oh. uh, it's Sarah Quinn. Oh, like, uh-huh. she was doing TikToks, and I remember she seeing was. them like way before like anything was going on. And I remember being like, yeah. "What is this?" Like, like before what? the pandemic. Yeah, like way before it, and I was like, "What are these? Like these are hilarious!" Like, I, and how is she editing them? And I was like, "This is crazy." So like, I have to credit her with uh uh you know my uh getting onto the app and creating things and everything like she inspired me to do it and I actually I messaged her and I was like because she was like your TikToks are so funny and I was like well it's your fault because you're the one who was doing them first and like I saw them and was like I want to do that too so I have to make sure I have to always I have to always give her credit because she's the one who inspired me to to get on there and do those TikToks and stuff it's funny what will what will go viral on TikTok and the songs that go viral. And for m- most of the time, like those songs are like throwbacks. You know what they I mean? Are. Like it's not like new songs. Um, the stuff that goes viral, you know, is the is the throwback songs and everything like that. Like I remember when everybody was doing that like remix or whatever to that Brooks and Dunn when the sun goes down. And I oh was my like, God. What is going on right now? Like it was crazy. And I know there's a lot of successful like on air personalities who have really big TikTok pages and stuff like that. And like my advice to like any like on air personality that is like looking to like expand themselves and like their own, I guess, personal brand and stuff like that. Yeah. Would be to like pay attention to them. Like, you know, um, like don't steal their content, but like, you know, uh, replicate it in a way that is fitting for you and your audience and stuff like that, because you know, it, it can work. It can work, you know? Yeah. There's, I think the content world's so big and there's so many niches, so many different personalities. There's there, I think there's room, as they say, room for everybody at the table to where we don't need to be yeah. blatantly ripping each other's content. Well, and it's funny too, like, and in, in the way that TikTok goes is like, you'll end up like, uh, meeting people on TikTok that are like within like your same realm because yeah. like they they lump you together because they'll see like you're liking this kind con- of this content and this guy is also liking this content and then you guys are like going to become friends and everything so I actually for a little while had another podcast going on called the dad rock podcast and that was with my two friends Kellen and Joel who I had also met via TikTok now Joel <sighs> is in Massachusetts Kellen is in Chicago and I'm in Albany but once a week we would get together and we would like listen to an album and then we would break down whatever album we wanted to listen to, whether that was uh, Kanye West or if it was a system of a down or anything like there was like anything goes and everything like that. Um, But it was funny because like literally like it puts you with like minded people. And, you know, I I, I think the thing with TikTok is that you kind of get to know that person a little bit because um, it's, it's funny because like they'll really put them people really put themselves out there on TikTok, yeah. whether, whether they, whether they know it or not, mm-hmm. um, they're putting themselves out there for everybody to see. And I think that's what makes it easy to know whether or not you're even going to be able to tolerate this person as somebody that you might want to be friends with in real life. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. So like, that's <laughs> like just the way it people goes. beforehand for sure. I know. And I think that's why people you see in the comments, I'm always a comment creep, you know, of those people yeah. that are like, Oh my God, you seem so cool. I'd love to hang out with you. Right. Like I think when, when some people like look at my, like my Twitter page and stuff like that, I don't mm-hmm. think that they know that I'm like a, a person that works in radio. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think that they get it. And it's probably because like, you know, I don't like, I don't talk about it a lot. And I also like aren't, and I also like kind of slam radio all the time, which is weird because I work in it, but like, it's also just like so easy to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just like one of those things where like you either get it or you don't get it. And like, you cannot like, like I've always said, like when it comes to like, the digital side, I can't teach somebody to be entertaining. Like I can teach them to write, but I can't teach them how to be funny or how to like, be like this, the person that like, is like the center of whatever, you know what I mean? I like that you talked about content that you're putting out on TikTok and that it also not necessarily always having to have a call to action and not always having to be like, we're a podcast and then like, and always selling it, you know, back to that original thing. I think creating that real relationship with your, with the audience, I think that they can see more of you in your digital person persona, I think at least like if they're looking at you on like a video on Instagram or something like that, and they're getting to know you a little bit more, 
or like if you do like do TikToks or something like that, I feel like it, it puts them in touch with you. It makes it see like you seem more real. Yeah. I just think I, I think it's funny, like the preconceived notion of like when like I, at least before, like when I first started in radio back in like in like 2006, like and people would be like, oh, my God, like you're on the radio. Like, do you see like celebrities every day? Like, do you, <laughs> yeah. like you like this is crazy. And I was like, guys, like I make like less than minimum wage and like I never see celebrities and like it's just it, it was like you know it, i was like it's like a it's fun because like my job is fun but i was like it's not like some like glitzy glamour lifestyle or anything and i think that's like a really hard thing if i could like if i like i always used to tell like people over like if i could like go and i could like tell like a young person that's going to school that wants to be in radio i'd be like uh don't like find something else that you can do that is very similar to that Mm -hmm. um or like that you can work in conjunction with because like it's just like it's a really hard thing unless you are like willing to go and like put a whole lot of like blood sweat and tears into going into like a bigger market or something like that um Mm -hmm. and i have to give i have to give like kudos to like anybody who has like up and like left and gone like across the country for like a radio job and stuff like that because like that is that is so brave and that is something that I am not brave enough to do <laughs> I remember um in 2012 um I was offered like I was working for Town Square and they saw my potential as far as digital went uh-huh. and they said okay we want you to become a digital managing editor we just acquired like six or seven six or seven like new stations or something like that um, across the, across the country, like, you know, take your pick of whichever one you want. And there were ones available in Colorado and there was like markets in Texas. And there was some in like, I, I can't even remember where, like down South and then like way up in Maine and everything like that. And I just remember sitting there thinking like, man, like those are so far away. Like if I change my mind, like I was like, I can't even do this. Like I was like, so like, I was like so intimidated by it. So I ended up selecting ma- uh, market in Massachusetts, which was just uh, like three hours exactly from Albany. So like if I wanted to like come back home and sure. visit with family and stuff like that and everything. And, uh, you know, but I, that's why I say like, like at, at certain points in time, it's like, you wish that you could have been like braver and maybe gone for it. Cause you don't know what's going to come. But again, like sure. also like in like a weird philosophical way, like if you had done anything differently then whatever's happening for you, isn't, wouldn't have happened potentially. So at the end of the day, if you know what you want, that's going right. to be contributing to your happiness, then why not? And especially yeah. now with the digital world. You can live wherever. That's another, that's another thing too, is like, don't like, don't like let your job like define you. Like you're more than that. Like you're a person and you're a personality. Like you are not owned like Mm -hmm. by this brand or by this radio station. So like, don't like hinge yourself so close to it so that like you are like directly associated with it in some way, shape or form. Cause I think it's only going to come back to bite you when you know you're on and looking for like your next job and stuff like that you know it's i don't know like that's why like i i hate when i see people like with their like when they're just like all about like this one brand and everything and they've made all their social media about like one brand and it's like it's like you're you are like brand yourself like yeah so and so on mix you know and like what happens when you get fired from mix now you have know. to go through all your right and then you got to go and create some like new like ha- like new handle on twitter for like whatever and then it's usually like i don't even know yeah, it's um like taken you know, or i don't know i just like i i never wanted to be like defined i guess by like radio i i don't know like it's a weird thing because i've worked in it for so long but i think the most interesting thing about growing your audience is like having them interact with you and stuff like that like that is like that's always going to like I don't care how long I've been doing it. Like when somebody reaches out to you and tells you that they like your content, like you should be happy about that. Like you should, that should never, like you should never get to a point where you're like, of course you like my content. You know what I mean? Like you should always be like, this is great. Like what awesome feedback. Like I had um, a woman uh, messaged our show Instagram page the other day, sent us like a whole bunch of voice messages. And she was just talking to us about how much she enjoys listening to our show because she will go out on these national uh, tours where they'll go and they'll do paranormal investigations. And while she's en route to it, she'll listen to our show. And then sometimes we'll have guests on that are the people that she was at this particular thing with. And she liked to go back and she'll listen to it. But she just like, like left me a bunch of things talking about how much her and her daughter 
enjoy listening to our show while they're going out to do this stuff. And I was just like, that is like awesome feedback. Like that is like the best like thing that you could do. You know, like, I think like back in the day, yep. it's probably like the equivalent of like getting an email sent to you or something. They always come at the right time too. And you're just like, man, like fuck this shit. Cause it's hard. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 so a, it's, a, it's a grind. And then yeah. those messages come through sometimes at the right time. And you're just like, well, you know, I, I guess I'm doing it right. Analytics can be such an addiction. Yeah. Um, I know like I am so guilty of it. Like I look at my podcast analytics every day, multiple <laughs> times a day. And sometimes <laughs> yeah. I have to tell myself not to, like, I have to sit there and I have to go, do not open it. Like don't yeah. open it and click refresh because there's not going to be much of a difference. Like you're not all of a sudden going to have gone viral. Like that's not just how, that's not how it works. So <laughs> I'm like, I have to tell myself like not to look at the analytics so much, which is hard because especially working in digital, like a lot of what we do is based on the analytics of everything. And sure. like, you know, my company uses Google analytics so we can like see like the real time stats of like how many users are on our sites right now and everything. And it's like real, like for radio people, like that is like real time ratings. That's like watching your ratings. Oh, come in. Yeah. And it is like a high. And like when you can see something that you like you wrote and you put online is like all of a sudden, like you've got hundreds of users, like looking at your one thing, you're just like, whoa, like this is, this is yeah. amazing. Like I did something great and everything. And it can just become one of those things that's like a high. So it's very similar. Like I'd, I'd say like looking at analytics like that is very, very similar to like how like people looked at when you create something on TikTok um, because TikTok will give you that big video. Like they'll mm-hmm. pump it out there and you're like looking at, you're like, oh my God, now it has a hundred views. Now it has 500 views. Now it has a thousand views and it just keeps going. And you're like, this is amazing. And then you like wonder why your next few videos didn't. It's like, well, because they wanted to give you that rush so that you continue to create content for them. Like that's what they want. Yeah. I mean, there's literally, I think like, you know, like documentaries out there about that kind of stuff. I've heard it. I've heard like somebody said it once they did like a really good video um, that it's almost like a Las Vegas slot machine type mentality. Like you get that one thing and you win the slots like once where you just keep pumping your money in there and now they're making a ton of money on it and you're losing, but you won that one time. So you think it's possible again. Um, And it's like a shitty way to do it, but it's like also like an ingenious way to do it to keep people coming back. Cause think about like, pre-pandemic, like how many people were on TikTok and then think about like how many people are on there now oh, or how many yeah. people are on Twitch now. Like yep. it's insane. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. crazy, you oh, know? Oh my God. Yeah. Like in every form of content and yeah. yeah, it is just, you know, at the end of the day, I think you have, you know, some people that were, you know, really into the radio thing itself. But I think for yeah. the most part, even so, though, so people call themselves radio th- people, I think are more closely aligned to you where they're actually more of a content creator and just yeah. radio was a place to put that. And I think more people need to step back and be like, okay, well, why did I get into radio? And then realizing like, oh, I can be creative and do the things that are more like passionate, you know, about how, like how you are. That's probably like the most terrifying thing about doing podcasting when you are on a roll and you are seeing like, you are getting consistent listens and things like that. And the audience is growing is like asking that question of like, do I take a break? When do I take a break? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because like, I know like for us, like we had started doing unrefined in, in March of 2021 and it really picked up steam. Like it really, really, really took off for us in like July of 2021. And uh, that's when we got like way more consistent with our episodes and the topics and switching over to that kind of like weird, unexplained content and things like that. Um, And it was like around December or something like that of, of 2021, where I was like, I'm fried. Like, I, I think that I need a break. And my co-host uh, Mitra was like, yeah, I need a break. Like, let's take a break. So we like made sure like we took like the Christmas week off and then we came back in January, you know? Um, and my biggest fear with that was that I was going to see listens drop off. I was like, oh my God, like, where are they going to, they're going to say, well, this show's not on anymore. So I'm going to go away. And I was wrong. Like there was still like every day, like I was getting like 25, 50 listens, 60 listens. Like, and I was like, and this is just people now consuming old shows and everything like that. Yeah. So I, I would, ha- I would have to say like, if you are consistent and you have enough content out there, it's very important to take breaks and not to be afraid to take a break because like everybody needs one, like everybody needs like just like a sanity day to like yeah. get their stuff 
together. That, that, um, that's good hearing that from you. Cause I was wondering, I was like, now, yeah, I was like, it has momentum now. So yeah. if I stop, are they going to drop off? <laughs> but you're if right. You like- were to take, if, if you were to take like a, a, just like a week off and take a breather and be like, all right, now I don't have to worry about a show this week. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, it's, it's nice. It's just like a really, it's a good feeling and mm-hmm. you need it. Like you need it for your own, like you, you need it for your own mental health too, to like unplug from it every once in a while, even if it's something you love doing. I think you need to take like a little bit of breaks from it here and there. Like, I mean, I love playing video games, but like I need to take a break from that sometimes because sometimes like it can just be like, yes, it's bringing me joy, but also it's bringing me stress because I can't figure out how to beat this stupid level in Donkey Kong tropical freeze on switch or something stupid like that. You know what I mean? So I've got to like walk away working in radio and stuff like that. I've become very quick at being able to do the audio editing. And then now like I'm getting more into like doing video editing and stuff like that, because along with the audio for our podcast, we also do video just like you do. Mm -hmm. Um, And we try to make it so like we have like, uh, you know, like a five minute clip for YouTube. Then we've got a 60 second uh, reel for Instagram. And then we'll try and do something for like a YouTube short too now and stuff like that. And then we'll incorporate that stuff into our TikTok page and everything. So it's like, you know, editing a bunch of different things, video, audio, the whole (sighs) deal, creating graphics. Like it's like, it's like a lot. And like, it's a mini radio station, like honestly, or a mini radio show. Like, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, it is. That's a good way to put it. It it is a, is a mini radio station and a mini radio show. And it is like, it is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I think like some people think like, doing a podcast is like, oh, well, you know what? You record it, you put it out there. And it's like, well, there's a lot of other stuff like behind the scenes. Like the fact that like for at least like my show, like we are researching three episodes a week and writing them and everything like that. So like, that's what we're doing like in our free time, Mm -hmm. like not during like the day-to-day thing. Cause like during the day, like I'm, I'm the digital managing editor for a group of radio stations. So that's what I'm doing during the day. Yeah. Um, So like when I have free time, like that's, when I'm doing the stuff for my podcast and everything. So it's a lot of late night work. I'm sure, you know, you can also attest to that. Right Now, because it's getting momentum and doing what it's doing, like, would you, if that was like your full-time job, would you like that? Or do you always kind of like having a hand at the radio station? No, I, if, if I could somehow make, if I could make doing uh, unrefined into my full-time job, if that somehow was uh, somehow possible to do, then I would a hundred percent do that because one, um, it would allow me to, uh, it would allow me to invest more time into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then therefore investing more time would be able to like make more money in doing it and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, like one of some of the, the best stuff that we've done is we've talked to people who have been to or managed like locations that are like haunted or whatever. Right. So it would then allow me to be able to go out and like actually go to those places and talk to those people face to face, like rather than zoom and everything like that. I mean, the, the dream for me would be to be able to take what I've done with unrefined and turn that into something that is full-time, something that is like a, a brand in itself, like, or something like that. So I, I totally see the potential for that. So I mean, it's going to be fun watching this, you know, yeah. like, because, uh, you know, they're back to the consistency thing. There are a lot of radio people that have started things that, I mean, and some that I'm just like, man, this is so cool. But again, it, it is a lot of work. So it's hard to be yeah. consistent. Um, and that's another thing too, like with like podcasting and sponsorships, like that's a grind. Like that is like, that is yeah. tough. Like I'm probably like talking to, or like emailing or like direct messaging, like several different businesses, like every day. And they're asking me questions about this and everything. And like nine times out of 10, like they're not even going to be interested at the end of the day. So like, that's another thing too. Like, don't get defeated by that because there is somebody out there that's, that's, that's going to be interested in working with you. You know, like, that's just how it goes like that. I couldn't imagine. Um, and I used to give them such a hard time, radio salespeople. I can't even imagine like doing what they do. Like that is a hard job. That yeah. is a hard job. Like I she's like, selling fact, on somebody else's behalf. Cause like right? how passionate yeah. are you? Right. Like, so I will never like, like I, back in the day, like I would be like, oh, sales, like they're not doing shit. You know what I mean? Like whatever, <laughs> yeah. like why isn't sales just going out there and selling it and everything? I would never say that. Like, you know, like the fact the past few years has a hundred percent changed my mind on that. Like that whole attitude that like, I, I would say like an immature attitude towards 
like that position, um, you know, and as sales can be tough people to deal with. Like we all, like, I, I think every radio person knows that like they're, they can be really tough people to deal with because they're trying to get the most for their client. Like they're representing their client on your behalf and everything. Um, but like, they're working so hard uh, to sell it and everything. And I think that, you know, uh, they, they don't get an, the respect that they deserve from radio people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's like, it's something that they should because they, they are, they're working really, really hard and they're doing something that like now, like as me going out and doing things with like a podcast and talking to businesses, I, I know how difficult it is. And I just like, I have so much respect for them. That's why it frustrates me too. When uh, places like cut their commission and stuff like that, or when they have ridiculous rules about like, oh, well, yeah. they need to be, you know, it butts in seats at eight 30 and everybody needs to be at the office. It's like, just let them sell how they need to sell as long as they're hitting their targets and they're doing their thing. And the way to encourage them is not to keep cutting their commission. It's so like that when they're, when they are doing such a hard job and especially when they realize, well, shit, I can just go to a different industry and get paid way more on commission by using yeah. my sales skills. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. we want to keep the good ones there. I have been very fortunate that in the three different uh, radio buildings that I've worked in, I've worked with really, really good market presidents who are just like there for you, like no matter what position you're in, like they're, they're, they're hard asses about things, but they're also like, they're, they're, they're not jerks or anything like that. I, at least, good. you know, I, I know, like I hear horror stories from people all the time, but like the people that I've worked with have been, have been fantastic. So that's so good to hear. Yeah. Uh, you know, I worked for a long time. Um, with the, with, uh, a market president, his name was Bob Osfeld. And, uh, he around Albany, New York was like, just like, so well-respected amongst like talent clients. Like he was just like loved, like people loved him. And then he passed away and like his, like, you know, seeing going to like his like service and seeing how many people were there from like the radio industry, like from like every radio company and like the entire, like, you know, the entire like area of Albany, New York. Like there were people there from like three different like local companies and there was like clients and business owners and like anybody who had ever worked for him in the past. Like when you see like somebody has that kind of influence, it's like really, really cool to see that and everything. And then I worked for um, of the longest time. She just retired from iHeart in Albany. I worked for a woman named Kristen Delaney. And she, again, like she is just like another person who was just like so great to work with. Like she gave me every tool that I needed to succeed, like every single tool that I needed to succeed. Like she rarely said no to anything, you know, like, and I think that that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Like, and I know, like, again, like, I, like I just said, like, I've heard horror stories about people working for really shitty bosses and stuff like that, but there are so many good ones out there. And I have been like, just so fortunate to work with ones that have been great. And like, given me what I needed to be good at my job. I love that. Like, that gives me more hope for the industry. Finding in, finding a niche in whatever you're doing is like the hardest thing and like identifying it and making sure that it's something that you can be consistent with, because I think that is like the biggest key, um, whether it's your radio show or whether it's podcasting is consistency. Um, you just, yeah. you have to be consistent because your, your audience is going to become accustomed to that. If you are somebody that, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're sporadically putting out episodes. I, that's, that's hard to follow. It's hard to know, like, are you going to put out another one or like, like what's going to happen here? So I think like setting up a thing where you're like, all right, well, I'm going to put episodes out once a week or uh, twice a month or something like that, but you have to be like forward about it. And I think you have to set that goal before you even start doing it. You know what I mean? Like you have to know what you're capable of and you have to, that's exactly it though. Like knowing what you're capable of. Like, I know, like for me, like I can do it. Like I, I have, I can, I have the bandwidth and I have the ability and the want to create three shows a week. You yep. know what I mean? So that's what I do. Like we do three shows a week and you know, that's, that's what we do. And it's a lot of fun. And most of the time it's recording three shows on Saturday night, starting at like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, oh, wow. So, I mean, yeah. it's a, like I said, it's like a lot of late night weekend stuff, but like, it's all, it's all worth it in the end to me. Cause I've taken this, this, this show and we've grown it into something that people actually look forward to hearing, which is so funny to me because like, I, I forget sometimes when I'm doing it that like people are actually waiting for the next episode to drop. And it's like, so it's still like, I think it's always going to be weird to me. I'm like, well, what, why? That's another thing they have to consider too. 
with podcasting is like, you know, if you're, you're doing a radio show, like, you know, you're on for a certain amount of time, the same people are probably going to catch it because they have their listening habits and everything like that. But like listening habits of somebody with a podcast is totally different. So I can tell you this, like, just like it was like last week, like last week, my listens like were down, like way down, like Monday through Friday. And I was like, what is like going on here? Like, I was like, did like I did we say something on an episode that like drove people away? Like this doesn't make sense. But then all of a sudden on Saturday and Sunday, the listens were like way up, like way more than usual. And I was like, well, this must be people like catching up or something. Yeah. Um, so like li- I think that's another thing to keep in mind is like listening habits change all the time. And you can see that when you're doing podcasting, because you can see how many people are downloading it and when they're downloading it. It's not as easy to see listening habits change when you're listening to radio. Um, people in radio, when they get the ratings and stuff in, especially as like a diary market and you're depending on like a diary to go to like the right place and the right audience, like that is nerve wracking and backwards as hell. Like they need to figure <laughs> out a new way to measure radio because like it, the way that they do it now, it just to me makes no sense because somebody could write down the wrong name of the wrong station and everything. So literally every person that comes on here has has, has something to say about the ratings. And it's so true. It's so flawed. And and I'll tell you this too, like the last like couple of weeks, as far as like my show goes that I, the podcast that I do with unrefined, like I've had a couple of like very interesting meetings with people interested in our product and everything like that. I mean, that's all I can say like right now, but Mm -hmm. like, it's been a very interesting thing to see, like the possibilities that I never even thought were possible with it. You know what I mean? It's doing something that I like doing and I like talking about it and it's fun. And I think like a lot of the time, like when people are trying to put together a podcast and everything, you got to do it on something that you like doing because if it's like, what's the point of doing it if you don't? It's just going to be work and you're just going to not be excited to do it. Like, yeah, I enjoy like these I've learned. I really enjoy the conversations with people. Plus it's mm-hmm. actually just helped me in general, just like be better at talking, um, even recording. It's like, oh, I can do less of that. Like, you know, if I'm coughing, make sure to cough here, <laughs> you know, yeah, just little yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah. It's all, it's all, everything is learning. Everything is learning and, and learning new skills and everything like that. You know, I think that's like one of the, I, I, I always thought that was, that's probably like one of the hardest things. And for some reason, like, uh, I don't know if, if other industries are like this too, but radio people are very hard at, or it's not easy for them to pick up new skills. No. And I don't know why that is. It's like, it's very hard. And I have to, I have to believe that it's like that in other industries. But for some reason, I've always like come across like people, especially early on in the days of like, be, like looking at digital as like working with the on-air product, it's very hard to teach somebody those new skill sets and everything. Um, and there was like, I mean, I came across a lot of people and it was, there was resistance and, mm. you know, like I wasn't hired to do this. And, you know, like there's just like so many people out there doing that. And those people have fallen off. Like mm-hmm. those people are like not involved in radio anymore. And the ones who are still involved in radio are the ones who have like uh, embraced change and they've embraced the new tools and the new ways of putting themselves out there and better representing um, the brand for the most part. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, that's just how it is. Closing advice, I guess, to, Mm. you know, to somebody that is like a radio personality that does want to grow their brand, I guess, as into more than just their radio show. If I had, if I had to tell somebody like what they wanted to do to like grow themselves to the grow yourself, I'd say, grow yourself, be yourself, put yourself out there. Because if you don't put yourself out there, like they're never going to know, your audience is never going to know like who you are, like talk about your interests and things like that. Like, you know, if you want to do an Instagram page or a Twitter or a TikTok or whatever you want to do, like just, just make, put, put yourself into it, you know, like your own personality, like interjecting your personality into something is the best way to grow yourself as a brand. Because at the end of the day, like, Somebody's going to listen to a radio station most of the time because because they like the music that's played. But if they then start to follow you as a personality on your social medias, it's because they actually like you as a person, you know, like they see like you, they have common interests with you or they just like give a shit about what you're saying. 
which I think sometimes we forget, like, you know, yeah, we're on the air, but like uh, people might actually give a shit about what we're talking about, you know, like, so, you know, don't ever sell yourself short, like make sure that you are like putting your personality into everything. You know what I mean? So I, I think that goes back to what you were saying too, about like, not just being a DJ, you know, mm. being a content creator. And when you're creating content and putting your own personality into it, there's no better way to like, you know, put yourself out there.